Chicago. Uh, then I ran into you. <laughs> oh yeah. Man, listen. <laughs> and uh, it was history then. And so, of course, when I ran into you, um, you took me under your wing, right? And um, at the time, I got to be honest with you, you was a household name in the community. And so, once I connected with you, we became great friends. Right. And we skated every week. Wow. Every week. Couple, every, a couple times. Yeah, a couple times a week. <laughs> and um, it, it was on from there. Um, I started to developing my style. Mm -hmm. I started, uh, you know, because I always could skate, but um, I wasn't challenged. Mm -hmm. And so you were far advanced. Okay. And um, I began to uh, swing with you. And picked up some stuff and da 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 da, -da whoop whoop and 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 then we we continue to do that and then I by this time though see I was a preacher I wasn't getting high I I, I had the word of God I was a preacher was, divinity school right doing Divinity's all that school, school yeah. yeah and so I I recognized something that was in the community that I believe that needed some um, some care. Because I knew there was always skate clubs, remember? Yeah, you remember that? You said I, that roller scores? Was yeah, the same all that. There was always skate But at this particular time, there wasn't no skate clubs or nothing going on in the community. See, what I liked about the community, because I was already a preacher and I knew about unity, I knew about community, mm -hmm. because I was in the church. And what I saw in the community was so awesome because the, the skate community had a culture that cultivated camaraderie. Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear what I just said? That, that say was it, good. The skate community <laughs> had a culture that cultivated camaraderie, oh, yeah, which amazing. means the brotherhood, the sisterhood, that we saw each other every week in this one place that we fellowship with that kept us out of some stuff that we could have got in, but because we were there, we were solid. And I saw the camaraderie was cultivated in the community, and the culture was amazing. And I looked at it and I said, there's, there, there's something that we need to impart. And I, and I came to you one night and I said, well, we need a skate club. Now, oh, 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 stay right there. Yeah. And I want the people to know yeah. that you are amazing because what you set out to do in your life, you write it down, you make it plain, and, 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 and you'll see it come to fruition. So, like you said, you came to me, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't know this story. And I'm going to let you tell it. I'm going to ad-lib a little bit, yeah. because I always wanted to tell this story. Yeah. And uh, But it was a void in the skate ring that you saw, yep. and you wanted to fulfill it by telling me what you uh, came to me and said. Right. So I saw a void. And he and I, we were close. We were we were skating every yeah, week, nice. all, <laughs> all you know, just on the regular. And I, I saw the void, and I came to we that night. I said, "Man, the community need a skate club." And we was like, "I you looked tripping? at you like you ain't." <laughs> I said, "This <laughs> like you tripping? Said, man, nobody you tripping. doing that no more." Right, I said nobody. that. I yep. said that. He was you like, remember. "You tripping?" And he said, "Won't you do it?" I said, "I can't do it. Mm. I can't do it because." You have the name, you have the posture, you have the position, you have the people, and you you were a household name. Mm -hmm. There was nobody in that skating ring, literally, at this particular time, mm -hmm. can get in your business, period, from my perspective. Point blank, you're right. From my perspective. Okay. And so, I said, we, we need a skate club. And he was like, we, man, you tripping, you do it. I said, no, you got to do it. You got to do it. Yeah. You, you're the man for the job. And so... That's when we uh, created uh, Midnight Rollers 2000. Yeah. And well, so, just to just to just to ad lib a little bit. Yeah. But when you explained that to me, when you said we, you got to be the one to do it. And yeah. you told me, you said, go home, write it down, That's write right. a vision. That's right. Make it plain. And at that time, I was dibbling and dabbling and reading the Bible a little bit as yeah. well. And you would always give me. Uh, uh, encouragement, encouraging pastor, uh, you know, uh, parables and things of that nature that's sure. inside the Bible. Sure. And one of them that made me uh, think about it was the 12 disciples. Sure. So that story that you in, uh, enlightened me on mm -hmm. had me to go home and think about it. 
and then the 12 disciples was for me to reach out to 12 men. Mm -hmm. And that's when we had a meeting mm -hmm. at Jasper's on 202 in, on uh, in Landover, Maryland. Yeah. Let's give y'all a little bit of history of the Midnight Rollers 2000. So this year was around 99 when, mm -hmm. we, when we had this discussion. But yeah, we, 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 uh, we put 12 men together and that's uh, started the Midnight Road is 2000. So, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. And after that, it, it sprung out and skate clubs just mm. just started following. Flourishing. Yeah. I mean, the skate parties and all of that, it began back in 2000 when um, Midnight Rollers kind of uh, erected. And, and and I just told where he went home and wrote what he wrote, came back with the name, da 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 da. And it went forth. And the culture in the community continued to cultivate camaraderie. Did y'all hear all those C's right what? there? <laughs> I forgot what I said. <laughs> culture in the community yes. continued Continue. to cultivate camaraderie. Oh, wow. So relationships were built. We were able to hold. And, and, the, and the thing is, the whole time, they respected me as a preacher. Yep. I was a preacher. I, my before I became a bishop, my 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 nickname on my shirts was Bishop V. Yep. I wasn't even a bishop, and so <laughs> I wasn't even. I still got the shirt, <laughs> Bishop V. And I wasn't even a bishop, but the guys respected my call. Whatever they did, they would do it, you know, and they, they would tell me to go somewhere sometime yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and step, do what they do. Step off, baby. yeah. But <laughs> but they respected me as a preacher and um, the camaraderie. So what we did, we 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 supported each other, we we stabbed each other, we aided each other, we held each other accountable, we helped with relationships. So it was literally for me, mm -hmm. right? It was literally for me because I knew my assignment. It was literally for me, the church, mm. because the church ain't the building. The church was the people. Right. And so we came together and we talked about God. We talked about everything. For me, it was an assignment for me. And so it was absolutely phenomenal. And so it continued, man. It continued. And then I eventually became a pastor. Mm. I eventually, let me back up because even in the Midnight Rollers, I had lost my job. Remember we? Yes. And you hired me. <laughs> and used to drop me to seminary every night in the truck. You remember yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. Those were some days that uh I was gonna ask you, do you have a fond memory yeah. of just, you know, some of those Thursday night skate nights? Yeah, oh man, <laughs> listen, listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> this is funny. Listen, now I'm gonna tell you, Willis, when I lost my job, I was working at a church and they fired me. And I had to take care of myself. Willis was doing some phone and cable stuff, and he hired me. And Johnny, every night Johnny on the spot, I hired me. <laughs> taught me to taught me the cable stuff, and um, taught me how to hook stuff up. And every night I had I would have to go to school between five to eight, so I had to finish my work and he'd drop me off at school. Mm -hmm. I'd be in the truck with my work truck. I would change my clothes. You had to wear a suit and a tie, Too and I had on boots and jeans. <laughs> I would go in there with boots and jeans and a suit and a tie. But thank God I graduated. But um, what I was going to say, I forgot. What we were talking say. about Thursday night. We're talking yeah. about how, how. Oh yeah, and then sometimes we'd be on a job on a Thursday night. I remember being in the house, oh, wow. <laughs> and we couldn't find the signal. Yes, right. It was a mess. And man, it that was house a mess. Was a mess. Oh, we couldn't find the signal, <laughs> and we were trying to get out that bag on a house to go to Thursday scary. night. It was unbelievable. We finally got out of there, man. We rushed up that skate rink. I think we skated hard that night than we ever did. <laughs> I had to make a phone call and say, hey, uh, can you bring me uh, some clothes to the skate rink? We changed oh, our clothes in the car. Oh, it was, it was, those, it those was, were the nights, man. We, we yeah, definitely man. was those, those adamant nights. about getting on our wheels and getting that energy that uh, that brought us joy. Yep, that brought us joy. Yeah, 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 that skating yeah, brought us yeah. joy. So, so around that time, you, you met a wonderful young lady. Yeah, I did. I yeah. did. I did. Around that time, uh, of course, I said I go to seminary. I was going to seminary at night. And on Wednesday nights, I would skate at Seabrook. We would skate on Thursdays, Wednesdays, whatever Mondays. night was open. <laughs> Mondays, Sundays, right? yeah. 
<laughs> and so Wednesday night, I went up to Seabrook and I saw my, I met my wife. And um, that's all in the book. I ain't yeah, gonna tell yeah. all shout that. Out, shout wife. out to Nicole. <laughs> shout, shout out to, to Nicole. Wife. She's amazing. Yeah. And so, and uh, it was like magic. And she changed my life, to be honest with you. The Bible says, he that findeth the wife findeth a good thing and obtained favor with God. When you find your wife, you literally find favor. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I was 40 years old and didn't have a credit. I, I didn't have, I didn't never buy anything on credit. I bought everything cash. Mm. So my wife helped me with my credit. She literally um, uh, co-signed on a car, my car with my name on it, so I could build my credit. Yeah. I literally got favor when I met my wife. That's the small stuff. But yeah, it means a lot. It means a lot. I, yeah. I remember us having a conversation at that time. It was the Lincoln, correct? Yeah, yeah. I remember you bought the Lincoln. Bought right? the Lincoln, and uh, uh, it's the way society is set up. You need a credit in this world. Yeah, and unfortunately, the era that we grew up in. I ain't gonna say unfortunately. Fortunately, the era that we grew up in at the time, mm -hmm. everything was cash. cash yeah. You know, you dealing with cash, you got. Money in your pocket, yeah. and uh, made you feel like you had an S in your chest. Absolutely. You got greenbacks in your pocket, right? Absolutely. So, we never really dealt with credit. So at that time, he was forty years old, and life is really set in and kicked mm -hmm. in, and uh, real life now. Real and, life. Uh, yeah. You needed to, you know, do some things in the way society is structured. Yeah. You need credit. Need credit. You know. And um, she helped me with that. And then my credit became better than hers. <laughs> it didn't take long. It didn't take long. <laughs> and so thank God for her. So it's, it's been a journey. We've been married 16 years, and God is good. So I eventually, then I started my church. Mm -hmm. You know, we got married, started my church. And what's amazing about it is that, that we is a founding member. Because he was right there. The, all the lights that you see at my church, I remember we putting up the first little three little lights I had up there. <laughs> Started my church. And um, uh, he was running the sound and doing everything. And it was it was amazing. So this is the relationships that skating cultivated. Yeah, cultivated. You know what I'm saying? And it's almost like a life journey. Mm -hmm. I came into your life. You came into my life, you know, 20 years ago, probably a little bit more than that, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's still it's still just like we just met. Right. Right? There's no difference. No you difference. know what I'm saying? So if you needed me for anything, vice versa, that's what we work. And that's what that's what we are. Sure, right? Sure. And so when you, uh, I I even told you back then when you was going to uh, seminary school, dropping you off. Or matter of fact, you was driving yourself at one point. Um, I told you, I said V. As soon as you get your own, yeah, I'll be right there. Yeah, and uh, I stuck to my word. Yeah, because he was a man of his word. Yeah, and everything he set out to do. Yeah, that I've seen for myself. Yeah, so I couldn't do nothing but do the right thing. Yeah, you know, I had one foot in, one foot out. Yeah, you know, I still outside, a working man, a family yeah. man, and all of that. Yeah, but uh, when you called, I came. Right there. I came. Right. You know, and that's 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 how it is today. Even with the We TV setup, I call my brother, mm -hmm. Pastor Vaz Old, mm -hmm. uh, Bishop, mm -hmm. and uh, he assisted me in any type of way, every type of way he could, you know. And that's all because of this thing we love it's called skating, skating. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's major. Yeah. Yeah. So so um, I think you were one of the first ones to videotape with your cell phone skating. in the skating ring and yeah. skating, yeah. right? So you're more of a, uh, I don't want to use a media person, but you like gadget gadgets, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so you probably had the first iPhone, you know, the type of person that you is, and, and that was a, a a good phone to record with. Yeah. And um, back then, you had recorded me skating, and I was like, fan, so I, I never seen myself skating, sure. you know, so that was a major uh, change in my life sure. to even see uh, my own self skating, mm -hmm. right? So, but when you were doing that, mm -hmm. I don't recall nobody else was doing, was right. doing that. So mm -hmm. what made you decide to want to really start videoing? Because, you know, in, in, in the church, I always had video cameras. Okay. And so, so I'm already ideally thinking about video or footage 
because I always um, got footage from my preaching. Mm -hmm. And so one night I just pulled out my camera <laughs> and started videoing what we were doing. And um, what happened was we were skating one night. And you know, when we first started, when we, Midnight Rollers, I was always your second man. Yes, sir. Like literally, I was your second man. And um, there's some things that you would do that I couldn't bring back to your remembrance. Oh, yeah. And I was like, man, I should re I, if I could record this. Remember? <laughs> I said, what you just do? I'll be like, and you I don't, don't even know, know what I did. You right. did something. And there was times when you were almost fall, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Be almost to the ground. And we flying. We doing, we flying. Yeah. It's like crowded. <laughs> we we balling. This is a Thursday It's about night. 10 people behind me. Yeah. And you flying, and you go around somebody and almost be on the floor and recover mm. and come back up and do whatever. Right. And I was like, I wish I had that on camera. Mm. And so I started taking the camera and let somebody else get you, hold you. Right. And I started grabbing it. Then I say, look. Mm. And you like, wow. That me. Made yourself. <laughs> that me. Yeah. And yeah. so that's how that worked. So, you know, you having that innovativeness. Uh, and this is what the people want to know. What prompted you to start skating outside during the pandemic and capturing videos of that nature? What, what, what prompted you to? Bored. I was bored. And, um to prevent me from losing my mind, not being able to do anything, I got um, connected to that TikTok app. Okay. And so once I did that, and my wife and I, we, we wasn't going to the skating ring because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And um, so we just started skating outside. And then um, once we skated outside and started recording outside, the God factor took in because it don't have anything to do with me. I didn't strategically do it. I don't know the algorithm nor the analytics, when to post, how to post, how to do all of that. It was it was literally organic and God's timing. I'm not doing nothing that nobody else don't do. It was God's timing mm -hmm. that God um opened up. He wouldn't have God wouldn't have been able to do this for open up and and make my name great or I'm like saying that or make something go viral. I wouldn't have been able to handle that 10 years ago. Mm. Mm. I wouldn't have been able to handle the popularity. Some people want it, but some people want the the likes but can't take the heat per se <laughs> because they don't know how to handle um, stardom. Right. Is that word? Yeah, right, yeah, right. I would have probably been arrogant mm -hmm. because what life has taught me as a grown man. So it was, the, it was all, it's the God factor, the timing of God that allowed that little video, something we do every week, yeah. something that we do every week to to, uh, to push it like that. It has nothing to do with me. I, I preached a sermon the other week entitled, um, uh, Don't Brag, It Ain't You. Don't brag, it ain't you. Right, don't brag, it ain't you. <laughs> and so I kind of uh, put that on me. All that God is doing in my life, it ain't me. Mm -hmm. I promise you. I, if it was left up to me, I would self-destruct. If I would use my own ideas, I would break out in handcuffs. It's <laughs> it's God, and that's it, and that's all. Mm. That's all I contribute to. Now, 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 watch this. I'm gonna say this, right? I'm gonna say this, and it may bless a couple people. Twenty-eight years ago, when I got locked up. I told y'all how I got locked up. I got high in Baltimore, lost everything, came back to my mom's house, and was just all over the city. Right. Bam, bam, bam. 28 years ago, I got locked up on skates. Mm. I was selling around Homer Avenue on skates. Right. Now watch this. 28 years ago on skates, I didn't know in 2021 there was going to be a pandemic and I would be skating in the middle of the street and then God <laughs> take it all over the world. That's why I know it's it's God's story. He just used me in it. Because yeah. I would have known those two things would collide together. Mm -hmm. People see you skating and be like, oh, man, that's cool. You know, you look peaceful, like he's having fun, and da-da-da-da-da. 
da 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 But 28 years ago, I literally sold the undercover around Homer Avenue on skates. Mm -hmm. Back then, when I was getting high, I lost my means of transportation. I lost my car. I bought a bike. I was trying to ride around there. I ended up giving that bike for some crack. Mm -hmm. And then I had them skates, I put them skates in the closet. Yeah. And so I would skate from District Heights off of Kipling Parkway all the way from Homer Avenue, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning with crack, pipe, all that in my pocket. I would skate all the way down Marlboro Pike, hit that Silver Hill Road, go straight on down there, hit Homer Avenue, and that was my transportation. So I'm the only one on Homer Avenue um, skating around the area, <laughs> selling drugs, going to crack houses, getting high, going back out, selling drugs. And that particular day, I sold to an undercover. They jumped out on me. Watch this. And when they jumped out on me, those days in the 90s, they was beating us up. Mm -hmm. Literally, they was yeah, getting us throwing us down, Pete beating Taylor us up. was known for that. Yeah. yeah and, and, and I'm going to tell you how God was in this. They jumped out on me. This is on my mother. This is on God. And I, I can't remember. It was a Caucasian man. He just put my hands down my back and said, it's over. Mm. And guess what? They skated me in the paddy wagon. And I shall never forget this. I, this is a true story. They laughed at me. We some of the friends, some of my little guys, they be laughing at me because they be like, oh yeah, you they skated right the before the pandemic. Okay. Now, 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 when when I got into the the, um, the paddy wagon, this is a true story. The two officers in the front seat says, we got skates. Hmm. We got skates. So, I get locked up. Now I'm facing 20 years, no parole. No, 10 years, no parole, because I was a three-time loser. I had three drug charges in PG County, mm -hmm. distribution charge. I had a boat charge. I had a charge I got caught around when I told you I got came from the Stevie Wonder. That was a coke charge around Hilltop, and this was the third one. So here I am now. I'm in the cell. Mm -hmm. I'm up Marlboro, Unit 12. H2. I know I'm a three-time loser. <laughs> They, and, and, and I said, God, I wish I could back up and tell y'all a couple of things, but I said, God, uh, if you free me from this time, I'll tell the whole world about it. Wow. And um, make a long story short, off that 10 years, I only did six weeks, and that was because they, they was holding me to figure out what to do with me. Right. right? So uh, here I am now, 28 years. On we TV, telling, telling, <laughs> telling you that it was nobody but, but God. It ain't Vance. It ain't Vance. Nobody but God. So how does it feel that you're able to bring or make church relatable or God relatable uh, to the masses? How does it feel? Yeah. How does it's it feel? it's amazing that God will use a simple thing to get somebody's attention. That's skating. Mm. Skate is a bait. Okay. Skate is a bait. I always said this to you many years, that skate is a gift. If you don't believe me, everybody can't do it. <laughs> Skating is a gift. And every perfect gift comes from God. So when you start using your gift to glorify God, you in the vein in which he intended. Mm -hmm. Oh, I said something good. <laughs> yeah, he did. I said something good. Every perfect <laughs> gift... It's from above. Mm -hmm. Every perfect gift. And so you use that gift. It's like this. Because you had a gift, it drawed me. Because it's from God. You said that to and me, so right. once I got here, mm -hmm. we were able to communicate right. and cultivate camaraderie. Because the gift will always draw people. Mm -hmm. Now what you do with it is totally up to you. I decided, right, since I'm a preacher. Right. To use my gift to glorify God. And you don't have to be. And what I'm realizing today, man, you know, this skating is international. It's global. It's reaching people who don't want to go to church, who don't like church, who's who's atheist. This one guy on online one day, he says, I don't even believe in God. Mm -hmm. But I follow you because I love your energy. Made it relatable, yeah. You know, I love your energy. And so um, I'm thankful for the opportunity, man, that God will use me at 55 years old um, from whatever I went through. Right. So, was yeah. that, so was that one of the comments that, that the guy said? Yeah, one of the through? comments. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. comments be amazing. One day, man, I'm going to tell you the honest God truth. One day I was in my kitchen, and I, I just started reading comments. And you got to be careful. 
if 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 you're not ready not to clap back, you're not ready to be famous. Okay. You're yeah. not ready to be it's popular. Surprise that comes with it. Right. Yeah. And so some things, if you're not in tune with yourself, it can it can it can um, it can take you on a roller coaster. You know, because some people, what they say, be mean, man. Some mm -hmm. of the comments I read be mean. I mean, literally mean. I, and I'd be like, how would you get this comment from this video? <laughs> It'd be that mean. And um, and so I was reading the comments one one day in my kitchen, and I just started to weep. Okay. I mean, literally, grown man. I just started to weep because somebody was appreciating. And see, as a pastor, sometimes you go through, as a leader in the church, per se, Sometimes you go through those moments when you don't feel appreciated by the people that you lead. Okay. Or you don't feel honored nor respected by people who's familiar, right? Mm -hmm. And so at that particular time, I was feeling that from the ministry I lead. Not, not as if anything is wrong with the people or the ministry. It's just sometimes when you, when you get comfortable or you're familiar with people, um, you don't honor. Okay. You got it? Yeah. Because you're familiar. Like people who don't know me, if you go out of town, they start treating you like royalty. In home, <laughs> you come in the house, your wife be like, okay, you fix your own play. <laughs> you feel me? And so I was reading those comments, and I just started weeping because it was, it was a lot of them just appreciating your value. Mm -hmm. Not as if it was, you know, it made me. It just, it just brought back attention because it went all the way back mm -hmm. to when I felt overlooked. Twelve years old, right? Yeah. All it went all the way back of somebody not appreciating what you had, mm -hmm. but it didn't have nothing to do with them. It was all about what I was feeling. Okay, you see. And so I had to work on that for years. I had to do some writing on self-approval and my value, my worth, and who I am. Because it really didn't have anything to do with nobody. It was all about me, right? It was all about me being selfish, wanting to have attention, seeking attention, being a people pleaser. And the pain, I'm going to tell you what helped me. God took me through that addiction and broke me. So it took the selfishness and the self-centeredness out because I thought the world revolved around me before I got on crack. Mm. So it was all about Vance and what Vance was doing. I was narcissistic, self-angry and dying. I was self-consumed, self-centered. And that's the core. That's the whole thing that we deal with with spirituality in the first place. It's God-centeredness versus self-centeredness. God-centeredness versus self-centeredness. When I deny myself, then I'm in the will of God. But when it's all about me, when I'm narcissistic, right? Mm -hmm. Then I get caught up. And so I, I learned through the pain that the pain in my life, it, it shined through the darkness and helped me. And people are often ask me, even as a preacher, even a day from the skating, they will ask me questions like, you know, my son uh, is, is in locked up. He locked up. Can you pray he get out? I say, I can't pray that prayer. Mm. I can't pray that he get out. I pray that we, God's will be done. Because God's will may have them to stay there for a minute. Right. Right? That's his will. To get it right. To get, and it, so, to get it right. Yeah, get it, get it together. Yeah. Uh, sit you down. Uh, give you some solace. Yes, sir. You know, some alone time. Really, yeah. You're not really alone when you're locked up. But again, yeah. that's the time that you in your own head. Yeah. And God's talking to you. And you're able to receive it because you're sitting still. You're sitting still. Yeah. yeah. Sit you down. <laughs> it make you like, like that. Like a child. God's, yeah. You are one of God's child. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen when he needs to sit you down. Because mm -hmm. it, it happens. I, I, I'm not sure if it happens to a lot of women. Yeah. But definitely his sons. Yeah. He sits us down. This guy, this guy, I, I, I'm, I ain't going to hold you. He was uh, online. This, this, this guy commented. And said, I don't want to hear about your past. Stop telling me about your past. I want to hear God. Okay. <laughs> he really he went on me like, I want, I want to hear about your past. Da, 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 da. You know what I mean? We just want to hear about some God and all this skating and all this dancing. Da, 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 and I and I said, 
How, it's funny how people can hate you and don't know you. Yeah. They, they, he don't know the vow. Oftentimes when I get interviewed, the, the question comes, why you do what you do? Why, why you write that book? Okay. See, I didn't write that book because I'm hurting for money or I need some merch right. or I can sell. I wrote that book because I made a vow in that sale. Mm -hmm. I made a vow that I would tell the world about it. And um, I can't go back on that vow. I made a vow to God. That's why I keep telling the story. My uncle came to my church and be like, man, you know, um, you know, you don't look good when you be telling your story about you on your crack oh, and you were man. stealing that. He said, man, you know, you can't build your church like that because, you know, people want to look up to a pastor that's, you know, da 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 I say, uh, um, I made a vow. <laughs> I ain't going back on the vow. Right, right. Yeah, I made a vow. And so now when I'm when I'm, I'm asking God, because you, I know you're going to ask me the question, what it is in the future that you look at. Yeah. Whatever I do, whatever I do in the future, because God is opening up doors that's, that's, that's absolutely phenomenal. Right. Whatever I do, I'm making that same vow. I promise I'll tell the world. Wherever God take me, I'm going to carry his name. Whatever interview, whether it be Oprah Winfrey, whether it be Steve Harvey, whether it be WeTV, whether it be every host, every television I'm going to carry God's name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. I was going to ask you about that. So, um, you had a vision mm -hmm. uh, when you was going to seminary school and when you got to church. Mm -hmm. And I remember the vision was 100 souls, 100 beds. Yeah, 100, right. 100,000 bed spaces. Okay, okay. So, you were able to secure... A recovery home. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's to help men. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. All right. And um, I saw one of your uh, social media posts that you had a donation, a right. ten thousand dollar donation from Smoking, Smoking Norfolk. Norfolk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about the relationship yeah. that you developed with Mr. Smoking Norfolk. Well, like through the pandemic, through the viral videos. Um, I've been able to um, curve a couple of relationships, and one was with Pastor Norfolk. I looked to my DM one night, and he went in my DM and says, man, I appreciate your energy. Don't stop. I was like, wow, that's Don't what we yeah. right? And so I didn't say anything to it. At the time, the book was out, and I was doing book plugins. So I responded to him. It was like, man, hey, I'm good to do a book plug-in. Can you come on and plug my book? It took about two or three days before he responded. Right. Um, and he said, yeah, I sent him the book, gave him the date, and he came on. And so he kind of jived, interviewed me. Okay. Like why we, you know, on the book. And then once I started talking about the recovery house, because I had never talked to him. Okay. I had literally never talked to him on the phone or nothing. This was just strictly... I be on, da 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 da, came on. Wow. First time me even saying something to him in person was on that Instagram live. Wow. And so once I start talking about my story and what I'm doing in Recovery House, he 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 was led by the Spirit. Yeah. Right, he was led by the Spirit. It touches his heart. It wasn't about who I was. It was about what I was doing, my heart of what I was doing, and that touched his heart. And he gave ten thousand dollars. We took that ten thousand dollars, and we put a brand new roof mm -hmm. on the, the the new recovery house in Clinton, Maryland that we're working on now. It needed a new roof, and it, it cost like ten point five. Mm -hmm. So that ten thousand put another roof on it. I sent the video to him so he could show his church, and they were excited about it. <laughs> Shout out to Smoking No for No. So you also met uh, Jamal Brown online as mm -hmm. well, right? Yeah, Jamal. So, he uh. He plugged in the book. Uh, Fred Hammond plugged in the book. Uh, Michael Cole, y'all. A couple people, man, That's that cool. uh, have opened up some stuff. And I, I'm grateful, man. I'm grateful for the doors he's opening yeah. and um, staying humble. And uh, one person said, one, <laughs> one person, a family member told me, he said, don't you lose your way. I said, baby, I gained my way. I found my way. <laughs> Um, that's the truth. <laughs> um, 
Don't you because lose your way. You ain't got to worry about me getting arrogant because I know where I've been. Mm -hmm. I know what I did, and I play the story and I tell it. That's what keeps me humble. I tell the story. And, I, I, and you know, by me telling God I'll make a vow, it keeps it fresh. The pain is fresh. I remember taking from my family. I remember taking my mother's car. I remember robbing, stealing, lying, cheating, conniving. I remember that, mm. like yesterday. And here it is. I'm one hit away from doing it again. Mm. I, I, you say it again. Cause I'm I, I one hit you. away from doing all that again. Mm. One, I'm one hit away from taking all these cameras when you ain't here mm. to go to the pawn shop to get a hit. So I don't, I don't act as if I'm above somebody or I've reached this apex or pinnacle in my life. I know who I am. I know my proclivities. I know my propensities. I know what I like. So I got to stay in the face of God. I got to remain humble. And I got people in my life that will check me so that I can have a balance. Because what God is about to do in my life mm -hmm. is unbelievable. And without the humility, without the submission, without the remembrance, I recall to my mind the things I've done to get and use and find ways and means to get more. Right. And I promise you, I don't want to go back. But one is too many. <laughs> and a thousand that, never know. That, that's true, that's true. So... This platform here is brought is, is is being put together to bring great content right. to the people, and uh, we have been doing this without no sponsorship or anything like that. So I ask the people that's out there watching, you know, feel free to uh, donate to the promotions, mm -hmm. you know, in order to keep this broadcast going and bringing great content like right. this, like you know that we need right. in our community as far as being able to socialize and this gonna this right here, this is gonna help somebody. That's right. May help a lot of people. That's right. You know, anytime we speak and, and, and talk and have a, a dialogue, mm -hmm. it may help somebody that's out there uh, watching and that reflect. Mm -hmm. And we may get some good comments and some comments and things mm -hmm. on this as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna plug in my cash app just for donations. That's dollar sign. Uh, we TV films, all caps, dollar sign, we TV films, all caps, and uh, we appreciate the donations if you're able to do any. And uh, don't forget to like, share, and uh, comment on uh, this broadcast. And a couple more questions before we close out. Is there anything, even though you already answered it, but I'm going to act it anyway? Anything that you foresee that's upcoming with with you? Well, there, there's some things coming up, but I can't I can't um, reveal them mm -hmm. because of the nature of the business until it it get released, and that's good for me because I tell everything. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but just just stay tuned. You know, of course, I, I I develop my own personal content every week, but yes, like. Uh, Willis was saying it it it's it costs to to do what he's doing and um, it it costs to pay for uh, rental property to pay for all sorts of streaming and connections to move the algorithm so people can get it on a larger level those things cost to get the word out to encourage the people around the world so please I reiterate um, to you that are watching to sow um, into um, this work that he's doing, that it would touch the lives of people. And I promise you that he is good ground. This is my friend. I mean, me, me sowing into his life has blessed me. 20, two, 21 years ago, I, I told him uh, to start a skate club that he's a leader of. And then they have nothing to do with me. And then 21 years later, God take that same gift and use it around the world. That's called sewing. I could have said, when he told me to do it yourself, I could have <laughs> said, you want to be a part of it? I could have been innovative and been the face and the leader because right. he wasn't even trying to do it. Right. But I was sewing. I saw something in that community and he was the man of job, man for the job. 
and 21 years later. See, sometimes your seed doesn't come back right away. Mm. It's 21 years later. It's 2021. 2021. And that seed back then, at that skating rink, thinking of somebody else. And your seed don't always have to be monetary, but your your money is where your heart is. That's what Jesus said. Where you where you will find your treasure where your heart. I know what you love by what you spend your money on. Mm. <laughs> Got it? If you spend your money on your children, you love them. <laughs> Husband, if you ain't spending your money on your wife, you don't love them. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> That's good, that's good. Uh, you know, that's just the truth. It, you, your, your heart is where your money is. Mm -hmm. And so that's what Jesus had, teaches us where to find your heart. And I ain't trying to be religious, mm -hmm. and I'm not religious. I got a relationship. I can look at your checkbook and tell you what you love. And so, <laughs> yes, that's the truth. I can tell you what you love <laughs> by what you spend your money on. Absolutely. absolutely. Right? And so, uh, like, like Willis got them pretty shoes. I know he loved his feet. <laughs> we, 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 we wasn't going to skip over the fashion. We, we was not going to let you get out of here without talking about but so, fashion. Really, yeah, yeah, so, so, give, get that so into this particular work that he's doing. And um, like he said, he don't have no sponsorship. And it takes money to run this studio. Costs money per month. Right. You know, some um, other persons that he may have to bring on, he may have to take care of. And you want to help that. Everything is not free. So please, take that cash out. You can find it on the screens. And then I promise you that your seed will bring a great harvest. I thank you. I thank you. So we're not going to let you get out of here without talking about fashion. And I know you started off with fashion years ago. Yeah. And... uh you have a clothing selection, I mean, not a clothing selection, a collection. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And that, what, what would that uh, clothing line be? It's, it's uh, advanced collectioning. Literally means advanced to your collection. Advanced collectioning. Um, I'm basically a style tutor. Okay. A personal shopper. And I will have some merch coming out soon. Um, but you can find the handles on Instagram. Okay. Advanced collectioning. But, um, Plug in your Facebook and your, uh, yeah, all my Facebook and Instagram stuff. Everything else is Bishop O's. YouTube. If you haven't um, subscribed to YouTube, go to YouTube. Some content is on there. Um, Facebook, Twitter, um, TikTok, Instagram. Mm -hmm. All Bishop O's. And so the clothing line is advanced collection on it. From normal to advanced. <laughs> Man, you 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 do you does it all, man. You do it all, man. Great, man. I great, you, appreciate you coming to you, sit sir. down with me, you know, here on WeTV, man. And uh, I couldn't I couldn't ask for a better relationship, you yep. know. You, and this this is an example right here for anybody that's looking. You you, you don't have to think you're not going to trust everybody, but sometimes you got to trust somebody. somebody. Mm -hmm. And this is my man. Wow. Thank you, man. Right. Appreciate it. We TV, we out. <laughs> <laughs>